Greetings, everybody. This is Chaplain Bob, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be part two of fire. Now, in Numbers, the book of Numbers, chapter three, uh, the first five books of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy are commonly known as the Torah or the books of Moses. Since they are often attributed to Moses, we're not exactly 100% sure, but that's how it goes. Now, in the book of Leviticus, there were very detailed instructions of how the tribe of Levi... There were 12 tribes of Israel. Levi was the one tribe that was set aside, sanctified by the Lord to serve him in the tabernacle, which later became the temple. And there were explicit rules on how to do things. I mean, it's like you come to the Lord his way or the highway, highway the hell. Hey, wait a minute, that was a ACDC song, right? Yeah, I'm on a highway to hell. Uh, and I was until uh, 1989. All right, Numbers chapter 3, verse 1. These also are the generations of Aaron and Moses. They were Levites, people. They were of the tribe of Levi. God gave them the law. Moses. These also are the generations of Aaron and Moses in the day that the Lord spake with Moses in Mount Sinai. And these are the names of the sons of Aaron. Nadab the firstborn and Abihu, Eliezer and Ithamar. These are the names of the sons of Aaron, the priests, which were anointed whom he consecrated to minister in the priest's office. And Nabdab and Abihu died before the Lord. They died before the Lord when they offered strange fire. Now, what exactly is strange fire? I don't know. But they did something that displeased the Lord. And Nadab and Abihu died before the Lord when they offered strange fire before the Lord in the wilderness of Sinai, and they had no children, and Eliezer and Ithamar ministered in the priest's office in the sight of Aaron, their father. You come to the Lord his way or the highway. And... In John 14, 6, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And anybody that runs around saying that the Jews have some kind of secret backdoor, unconditional, eternal covenant, is calling Jesus a liar. All right, here we go. Let's go to Numbers chapter 11, verse 1. And when the people complained, God hates complainers. And when the people complained, it displeased the Lord, and the Lord heard it, and his anger was kindled. And the fire of the Lord burnt among them and consumed them that were in the utmost, uttermost parts of the camp. And the people cried unto Moses. And when Moses prayed unto the Lord, the fire was quenched. And he called the name of the place Taborah, because the fire of the Lord burnt among them. I'm sure if you look up Taborah, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, probably means something, fire of the Lord burning. A lot of these Old Testament names have meanings. 
I mean, a lot of them. Not just pl uh, places, but people, too. All right, verse 4. And the mixed multitude. What's a mixed multitude? Non-Israelites? I don't know. Were there Canaanites among them? Egyptians? Uh, did some of the Egyptians decide to go with Israel? I don't know. There's not that much information. But it says, And the mixed multitude that was among them fell a lusting. And the children of Israel also wept again and said, Who shall give us flesh to eat? Oh, we remember the fish which we did eat in Egypt freely, the cucumbers and the melons and the leeks and the onions and the garlic. But now our soul is dried away. There is nothing at all besides this manna before our eyes. So here it is. What, you know, the Lord gave them food to eat in the desert and they're complaining. Oh, well, I miss the fish and the cucumbers and the melons and the leeks and the onions and the garlic. I miss this. And they're complaining. Verse 7. And the manna was, manna was as coriander seed, and the color thereof as the color of B-D-E-L-L-I-U-M. Bedellum? And the uh, don't ask me what it is. I'd have to look it up. I have no idea. And the people went about and gathered it and ground it in mills and beat it with a mortar and baked it in pans and made cakes of it. And the taste of it was as the taste of fresh oil. And when the dew fell upon the camp in the night, the manna fell uh, upon it. And then Moses heard the people weep throughout their families, every man in the door of his tent. And the anger of the Lord was kindled greatly. Moses also was displeased. And Moses said unto the Lord, Wherefore hast thou afflicted thy servant? And wherefore have I not found favor in thy sight, that thou layest the burden of all this people upon me? See, Moses was sick of them too. Have I conceived all these people? Have I begotten them? That thou shouldest say unto me, Carry them in thy bosom as a nursing father beareth the suckling child unto the land which thou swearest unto their fathers? Whence should I have flesh to give all these this people? For they weep unto me, saying, Give us flesh that we may eat. Well, contrast that to in Mark 6, chapter 41, where Jesus, uh, and when he had taken the five loaves and two fishes, he looked up to heaven and blessed and break the loaves and gave them to his disciples to set before them. And the two fishes divided he among them all. And they did all eat and were filled. And they took up 12 baskets full of the fragments and of the fishes. And they that did eat of the loaves were about 5,000 men. That's not including the ch women and children, right? Twelve baskets. One for each tribe of Israel, right? All right, let's go back. Uh, Numbers 11, verse 13. Whence should I have flesh to give unto all this people? For they weep unto me, saying... Give us flesh that we may eat. I am not able to bear all those people alone, because it is too heavy for me. And if thou deal thus with me, kill me. Kill me, I pray thee, out of hand, if I have found favor in thy sight, and let me not see my wretchedness. And the Lord said unto Moses, Gather unto me seventy men, seventy. This is the Sanhedrin, right? Gather unto me seventy men of the elders of Israel, whom thou knowest to be the elders of the people and officers over them, and bring them unto the tabernacle of the congregation, that I may stand there with thee, and I will come down and talk with thee there, and I will take of the spirit which is upon thee, and I will put it upon them, and they shall bear the burden of the people with thee, that thou bear it not 
thyself alone. And say thou unto the people, Sanctify yourselves against, against tomorrow, and ye shall eat flesh, for ye shall have wept, I'm sorry, for ye have wept in the ears of the Lord, saying, Who shall give us flesh to eat? For it was well with us in Egypt. Oh yeah, how quickly they forget that they were slaves building things for Pharaoh. Oh yeah, we want to go back to Egypt and, and eat the fish and the garlic and the melons and the cucumbers. Oh yeah, that was so good for us back then. You know, they were crying unto the Lord for their affliction under the Egyptian taskmasters. Here it is, he, he redeems them, brings them out of Egypt. And here it is, they're complaining and crying again. Sanctify yourselves against tomorrow and ye shall eat flesh. For ye have wept in the ears of the Lord, saying, Who shall give us flesh to eat? For it was well with us in Egypt. Oh yeah, it was great in Egypt, therefore. Therefore the Lord will give you flesh and ye shall eat. Ye shall not eat it one day, nor two days, nor five days, neither ten days, nor twenty days, but even a whole month until it come out at your nostrils. Have you ever heard that? You're, you're going to eat this until it comes out of your nose. <laughs> oh boy. But even a whole month until it come out at your nostrils and it be loathsome unto you because that ye have despised the Lord which is among you and have wept before him saying, why came we forth out of Egypt? And Moses said, the people among whom I am are 600,000 footmen. Now think about this, people. This is back thousands of years before Christ. And there's 600,000 footmen, just men. How many women? How many children? And you're going to tell me a few million Jews are all of Israel? I mean, no wonder the churches are dying. It's fairy tales. I mean, you know, God said, be fruitful and multiply. And Moses said, the people among whom I am are 600,000 footmen, and thou hast said, I will give them flesh that they may eat a whole month. Shall the flocks and the herds be slain for them to suffice them? Or shall all the fish of the sea be gathered together for them to suffice them? And the Lord said unto Moses, Is the Lord's hand waxed short? You know, is my hand too short to be able to do this? I mean, really? I, that's the Bob translation. Is the Lord's hand waxed short? Thou shalt see now whether my word shall come to pass unto thee or not. And Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord and gathered 70 men of the elders of the people and set them round about the tabernacle and the Lord came down in a cloud and spake unto them and took of the spirit that was upon him and gave it unto the 70 elders and it came to pass that when the spirit rested upon them they prophesied and did not cease but there remained two of the men in the camp the name of the one was Eldad and the name of the others Medad and the spirit rested upon them and they were of them that were written but went not out unto the tabernacle, and they prophesied in the cap. And there ran a young man and told Moses and said, Eldad and Medab do prophecy in the camp. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of Moses, one of his young men answered and said, My Lord Moses, forbid them. <laughs> and Moses said unto him, Envious thou for my sake? In other words, are you, are you jealous over them for me? That's the Bob translation. And Moses said unto him, Envious thou for my sake? Would God that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit upon them. Ah, when did that happen? Pentecost, people. Didn't it? All right, let's go to the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, starting in verse 1. Now, for those of you that don't know it, the day of Pentecost 
Uh, Penty, if I remember correctly, has reference to 50. Uh, it was a Greek name of a Hebrew holy day, one of the feast days of the Lord. Uh, and it's a New Testament fulfillment of the Old Testament holy days. We call them holidays, but they were holy days. So let's read Acts chapter 2, verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Well, all meaning all the, the believers and the apostles, I suppose. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. Now that word wind in the Greek is from the word pneuma. And it has reference to air. You've ever heard of pneumatic tools, air tools? Uh, they use air tools in places where there's water and where it's less, it's more safer, it's more safety to use it than electric tools. If you ever go to a tire shop, they're using pneumatic tools, air tools. So sometimes they translate this wind, air, or spirit. Um, just like in the Old Testament, uh, when God formed Adam of the dust of the earth and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, well, it's the same idea. And uh, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues as of fire, cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues, languages, as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven, now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because they, that every man heard them speak in his own language. That's what they mean by tongues, not this Pentecostal stuff where they're slithering on the floor like a snake, speak spouting gibberish. I mean, come on, people. Verse 7, And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how and how hear we every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers in Mesopotamia and in Judea and Cappadocia in Pontius and Asia. Um, P-H-R-Y-G-I-A and uh, P-A-M-P-H-Y-L-I-A in Egypt and in parts of Libya about Cyrene and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians. Do we not hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God? And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? Others mocking said, These men are full of new wine. Anytime you're preaching, people, you're going to get the mockers. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And we're going to go to Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. I guess I'm going to be having dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaids, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy, 
and I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, not Yeshua HaMashiach. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. Him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God ye have taken, and by wicked hands have crucified and slain, whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. For David speaketh concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is on my right hand, that I should not be moved. Therefore did my heart rejoice, and my tongue was glad. Moreover, also my flesh shall rest in hope, because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell. Ah, you see, your body and your soul and your spirit are not the same. There's people that will tell you that uh, there is no hell, and it's just the grave. Uh Uh-uh. Because thou will not leave my soul in hell. Your soul is not your body. And your spirit is not your soul. There are three different parts. Three different parts. I do an entire study on this. Because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Thou hast made known to me the ways of life. Thou shalt make me full of joy with my countenance. Men and brethren, let me speak freely unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulcher is with us unto this day. Therefore, being a prophet and knowing that God hath sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. He, seeing this before, spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, Neither his flesh did see corruption. You see, people, when Jesus said that he was going to be uh, three days and three nights in the heart of the earth, he wasn't joking around. In Matthew 12, 37, Jesus said, For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. See, the Bible says, Uh, Life and death are in the power of the tongue. I'm paraphrasing, but yeah. Do we confess that Jesus Christ is Lord? Or do we deny him? For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Then certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we would see a sign from thee. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given unto it, shall be given to it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. Jonah, right? Jonah the whale? For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Let's go back to Acts chapter 2, verse 31. Okay, speaking of David. He, seeing this before, spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. This Jesus hath God raised up, whereof we are all witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he hath shed forth this, which ye now see and hear. For David is not ascended into the heavens, for he he saith himself, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand until I make thy foes thy footstool. Therefore let 
all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus, whom ye have crucified, not the Romans. Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus, whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, not Yeshua HaMashiach. Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of of the Holy Ghost. For the promises unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Did you catch that? Even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Boy, those words ring true today as they did back then. Back to Numbers 11, verse 9, 29. And Moses said unto him, Envious thou for my sake? Would God that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit upon them. Oh, yeah. And Moses got him into the camp, he and the elders of Israel, and there went forth a wind. Now, this is the Hebrew word, not the Greek, but it's similar meaning. And there went forth a wind from the Lord and brought quails from the sea and let them fall by the camp, as it were a day's journey on this side and as it were a day's journey on the other side, round about the camp. In other words, it would take you a day's walking to be able to look at all those quails. I mean, they were just all over the ground. A day's journey on both sides, um, round about the camp, and as it were, two cubits high upon the face of the earth. People, that's about, that's about three feet or a meter high. I mean, you're talking quails stacked up to your waist, as far as you can walk in a day, all over the place. I mean, didn't God say 30 days? You're going to eat quail? You're going to eat for 30 days until it comes out of your nose? Oh, yeah. And the people stood up, uh, stood up all that day and all that night, and all the next day, and they gathered the quails. He that gathered least gathered 10 homers, and they spread them all abroad for themselves round about the camp. And while the flesh was yet between their teeth, Ere it was chewed, the wrath of the Lord was kindled against the people. And the Lord smote the people with a very great plague. And he called the name of that place, oh boy, Kibroth Hatava. I don't know. I should have studied more Hebrew in Bible college, but. Uh, all right, so, and he called the name of that place Kibroth Hatavah, because there they buried the people that lusted. And the people journeyed from Kibroth Hatavah unto Hazaroth and abode at Hazaroth. All right, let's go to Numbers chapter 16. I guess we're going to close out pretty soon. Uh, verse 1. Now Korah, the son of Izhar, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi. So he was a Levite. And Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab and On, the son of Peleth, sons of Reuben, took men. And they rose up before Mem uh, Moses with certain of the children of Israel, 250 princes of the assembly, famous in the congregation, men of renown. So here it is, important people. And they gathered themselves together against Moses. Now, this is the thing. 
God picked Moses, okay? He didn't pick Korah. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron and said unto them, Ye take too much upon you. Seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them. Ooh. All the congregation are holy, every one of them, and the Lord is among them. Wherefore then lift ye up yourselves above the congregation of the Lord. In other words, who made Moses? Who made you our ruler? Look, this whole congregation's holy, every one of them, and the Lord's among all of us. And you think you're something special, Moses? And when Moses heard it, he fell upon his face, and he spake unto Korah and unto all his company, saying, Even tomorrow the Lord will show you who are his and who is holy, and will cause him to come near unto him, even him whom he hath chosen will he cause to come near unto him. This do, take your censers, Korah, and all his company. Now what's a censer? It's something you burn incense in. This do, take your senses, Korah, and all his company, and put fire, fire therein, and put incense in them before the Lord tomorrow. And it shall be that the man whom the Lord doth choose, he shall be holy. Ye take too much upon you, ye sons of Levi. And Moses said unto Korah, Here I pray you, ye sons of Levi, seemeth it but a small thing unto you that the Lord, that the God of Israel hath separated you? from the congregation of Israel to bring you near to himself to do the service of the tabernacle of the Lord and to stand before the congregation to minister unto them? And he hath brought thee near to him and all thy brethren, the sons of Levi, with thee. And seek ye the priesthood also? For which cause both thou and all thy company are gathered together against the Lord? And what is Aaron that ye murmur against him? And Moses sent to call Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, which said, We will not come up. Is it a small thing that thou hast brought us out of a land with, that floweth with milk and honey to kill us in the wilderness? Except thou make thyself altogether a prince over us? Oh yeah, they're saying Egypt... Oh yeah, Egypt was a land flowing with milk and honey. And then you want to be a prince, you want to be our ruler, and bring us into this wilderness so you can kill us? I mean, this is what they're saying. This, that's, that's the Bob translation. Moreover, thou hast not brought us into a land that floweth with milk and honey. In other words, they're in the desert, okay? They're, they're, they haven't gone into the promised land yet, but that's what God said. He would bring them into a land with milk and honey but they're still in the desert. You see, they were in Egypt physically and spiritually. And God brought them out of Egypt physically. Now he's trying to spiritually cleanse them from Egypt. But no, nope, their minds are back on Egypt. Oh yeah, we had it so good. We had milk, we had honey, we had fish, we had melons, we had cucumbers and garlic. And leeks, oh, they were so delicious in Egypt. And here it is, Moses brings us out of here and, and in the wilderness, in the desert, and he, he wants to be our he wants to be our king. And we don't want this. We don't want this at all. Verse 14. That's the Bob commentary. Moreover, thou hast not brought us into a land that floweth with milk and honey, or given us inheritance of field and vineyards. Wilt thou put out the eyes of these men? We will not come up. And Moses was very wroth. He was mad. And Moses was very wroth and said unto the Lord, Respect not thou their offering. I have not taken one ass from them, neither have I hurt one of them. And Moses said unto Korah, Be thou and all thy company before the Lord, thou and they and Aaron tomorrow. And take every man his censer, and put incense in them, and bring ye before the Lord every man his censer, two hundred and fifty censers, thou also and Aaron, each of you his censer. And they took every man his censer, and put fire in them, 
and laid incense therein, and stood in the door of the tabernacle of the congregation with Moses and Aaron. And Korah gathered all the congregation against them. Against who? Moses and Aaron, the chosen of the Lord. And Korah gathered all the congregation against them unto the Lord of the tabernacle of the congregation. And the glory of the Lord appeared unto all the congregation. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, Separate yourselves from among this congregation, that I may consume them in a moment. And they fell upon their faces and said, O God, the God of the spirits of all flesh, shall one man sin, and wilt thou be wroth with all the congregation? And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the congregation, saying, Get you up from about the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. And Moses rose up and went unto Dathan and Abiram, and the elders of Israel followed him. And he spake unto the congregation, saying, Depart, I pray you, from the tents of these wicked men, and touch nothing of theirs, lest ye be consumed in all their sins. And so they got up from the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram on every side. And Dathan and Abiram came out and stood in the door of their tents, and their wives and their sons and their little children. And Moses said, Hereby ye shall know that the Lord hath sent me to do all these works, for I have not done them of my own mind. In other words, the Lord sent me to do this. I didn't come up with this on my own. Verse 29. If these men die the common death of all men, or if they be visited after the visitation of all men, then the Lord hath not sent me. In other words, if they live to a ripe old age, then the Lord didn't send me and I'm a false prophet. Verse 30. But if the Lord make a new thing and the earth open her mouth, and the earth open her mouth and swallow them up with all that appertain to, unto them, and they go down quickly into the pit, then ye shall understand that these men have provoked the Lord. And it came to pass, as he had made an end of speaking all these words, that the ground clave asunder that was under them, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up and their houses and all the men that appertained unto Korah and all their goods. They and all that appertained to them went down alive into the pit, and the earth closed upon them. Not only did the earth open up, it closed. So if you think you were going to throw a rope down there to, to help them get out of the pit, wrong. And the earth closed upon them, and they perished from among the congregation. And all Israel that was round about them fled at the cry of them, for they said, lest the earth swallow us up also. And there came out a fire from the Lord. Boy, there's a lot of fire here, huh? And consumed the 250 men that offered incense. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Eliezer, the son of Aaron, the priest, that he take up the censers out of the burning, and scatter thou the fire yonder, for they are hollowed. The censers of these sinners against their own souls, let them make them broad plates for a covering of the altar, for they offered them before the Lord. Therefore they are hollowed, and they shall be a sign unto the children of Israel. And Eliezer the priest took the brazen censers, wherewith they that were burnt had offered, and they were made broad plates for a covering of the altar, to be a memorial unto the children of Israel, that no stranger which is not of the seed of Aaron, come near to offer incense before the Lord, that he be not as Korah and his company, as the Lord said to him by the hand of Moses. But on the morrow, all the congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron, saying, Ye have killed the people of the Lord. Moses and Aaron, you're a bunch of murderers. You killed them. Oh, boy. Ye have killed the people of the Lord. 
And it came to pass when the congregation was gathered against Moses and against Aaron, that they looked toward the tabernacle of the congregation, and behold, the cloud covered it, and the glory of the Lord appeared. And Moses and Aaron came before the tabernacle of the congregation, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Oh boy, here comes the punchline. Get you up from among this congregation, that I may consume them as in a moment. And they fell upon their faces. And Moses said unto Aaron, Take a censer and put fire therein from off the altar, and put on incense, and go quickly unto the congregation, and make an atonement for them. For there is wrath gone out from the Lord. The plague is begun. And Aaron took as Moses commanded, and ran into the midst of the congregation. And behold, the plague was begun among the people, and he put on incense and made an atonement for the people. And he stood between the dead and the living, and the plague was stayed. Now they that died in the plague were 14,700 besides them that died about the matter of Korah. And Aaron returned unto Moses unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and the plague was stayed. Um, the uh, moral of that story is, don't complain. Don't fight against the Lord. All right, this is the end. Uh, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name, amen. <laughs>